I'd like to welcome you to the beautiful city of Ringsburg. Now Ringsburg is a wonderful place to live. It's perfectly circular and it has a radius within the city limits of five miles. Now the population density within Ringsburg changes. Population density is a function of the distance from the city center. So at city center is where we see the most density. And as you move away from city center, the population density in people per square mile gets less and less and less. Our job is to write a definite integral that expresses the total population of Ringsburg. Now one might think, why don't you just take the population density in people per square mile? Multiply it by how many square miles and you'd be done. Well, that's a great thought. However, <laughs> the population density changes. Here we are again. We have to think about infinitely many, infinitesimally thin slices, and then we have to sum the stuff up. I know, exactly. What stuff? Let's figure it out. So, what we want to think about in this case is, first, what does a slice look like? So we can figure out what stuff we're going uh, to sum up. So what would a slice look like? So here's the issue. Since the population density is a function of the distance from the city center, and that function is the Greek letter rho. Rho is a function of that distance r, the radius or the distance from city center. r equals zero, r equals five. So again, we're not going to focus on a specific function here. We just want to be thinking about what does a slice look like and what stuff are we going to sum up? So a slice would be something like this. Can you imagine a perfect circle around the city center? Pretend that that's a perfect circle. That is infinitesimally thick or thin. <laughs> So I know I'm drawing it like a washer or something, but what I want you to think about is that inside this infinitesimally thin ring, the population density is in theory the same because it's infinitesimally thin. That's the beauty of calculus. When you can think about infinitesimals, when you can think about infinities, we can do marvelous things. And so inside of that red, ring, the population density is all the same. So many people per square mile everywhere inside of that ring. So if I could figure out that the population density in that case, that row of R in so many people per square mile, and I could take that population density within that ring and multiply it by the area of that ring, because area would be so many square miles. Now, if you had so many people for every square mile times some number of square miles, you would therefore know how many people live inside that ring. Now, if we find out how many people are inside that ring, plus how many in that ring, 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 that ring all the rings, infinitely many, infinitesimally thin, sum them all up. That's the stuff we're going to sum up, is the number of people inside each of these infinitesimally thin rings. Now, how do we find the area of that red ring? Well, can you guys imagine this? Imagine I came in with a piece of scissors, a, piece of scissors, a, a, a pair of scissors, and I took this red ring and I snipped it, let's just say right here. And I took that red ring and I opened it up. What you would see, you do it down here, maybe I'll do it over here. What you would see is that red ring would open up into a really long, very thin rectangle. And the reason I do that, and you've seen it before, the area of a red rectangle, or any color, the area of a rectangle is easily found. It's the length of that rectangle times the width of that rectangle. The area of this rectangle is going to be the length times the width. Now let's talk. The length of that rectangle over in this picture is like this. It only becomes a length when we snip it and open it up flat. That length, however, came from the perimeter, the circumference of that circle. 
and the circumference of a circle is found by taking 2 pi times r. So my length is equivalent to 2 pi times the radius. And this is an important moment because notice the function is a, is a function of r. So we don't really want to talk about length. We want something relative to r. Well, the length is 2 pi r. How nice. The width. Over here, the width is that... Mm. Now, you've seen it a hundred times now. Is it a little change in x, a little change in y, a little change in h, a little change in what? Well, what I'm changing here is the radius. See, we have a radius of something, then we're going to change it by an infinitesimal. We're going to change the radius. So the width is going to be corresponding to that delta r, that change in radius. That's going to give me the area of that strip in square miles, the area of that ring in square miles. So if I took the population density at that radius, multiplied it by the area at that radius, I'm going to get the population at that radius. Sum them all up for the entire circular city called Ringsburg, and we've got the overall population. So finally, what this is going to look like is this. The population of Ringsburg is going to be found by summing up the population density, rho, as a function of r. I know you don't have the function, but hey, be okay. We can represent that function with symbols, rho of r, the function rho evaluated at r. That is, if you input in r, you're going to output a population density measured in people per square mile. You multiply that by the area of one of those slices, if you could call it that, one of those rings. And the area of one of those rings is 2 pi r times the change in r, the length, 2 pi r, times the width, delta r. Of course, once we get to the definite integral, we're just going to go with the good old dr. And then you just have to ask yourself, r varies from what to what? That population density function is going to vary from what to what? That circumference is going to vary from what to what? Well, r is going to vary from city center, r is 0, to city edge, r is 5 miles. And then we can kind of get a sense of it. If r was the full 5, the circumference would be 10 pi. If r was 0, the circumference would be 0. So we work through this, sum up all infinitely many, infinitesimally thin, and this is going to give us the overall population of Ringsburg. Let's just do one more thing to make sense. Remember, this is the population density, people per square mile. And all of this is the area of a slice measured in square miles. And so indeed, if we had a particular function, rho of r, that measured population density for any input of R, we could then plug it into Desmos or something, or I know somebody just loved to integrate by hand, you could find the population of Ringsburg. Now, just so you know, if you ever visit there, Ringsburg, what a beautiful city you should go visit.